Hey, and good morning, everyone. Hey, Amen. We'd like to thank, uh, welcome you to the Peninsula Pentecostals here. This is where you can find God. You can find peace. Amen. And uh, apply the word of God to your life as it's taught by Pastor Rango. He teaches the truth here. Amen. And it benefits your life. You know, in Nehemiah 8 and 10, the very last part of that scripture says, For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Wrap your life with, with God's word. Amen. Wrap your speech with God's word. Amen. And you'll find there's peace and contentment and joy. Amen. In your life that comes from the love of God, that comes from the word of God. But we just like to thank you for attending here this morning, whether you're here in person or online. I believe God has something in store for you this morning. Amen. He's a great God. And we love him, and we appreciate God, and we like to let him know that around here. So welcome to the Peninsula of Pentecostals, and let's kick it off right. Let's worship the Lord, amen, with our praise singers and, and our musicians here, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. When I think of your goodness, God, my soul cries. Hallelujah to you this morning, Jesus. There's no one else, God, that deserves all the glory and all the praise. We worship you today, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are excited about what God has done in your life, if it makes you want to shout for all the things that he has done unto you, could you begin to lift up your voice to God and begin to say, Hallelujah. God, we glorify you in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are up here this morning. We are so thankful that you guys, that you are here to join us this morning in Christian training where the presence of God is going to do something awesome in your life today. And today we're going to transition our worship from just singing and clapping of our hands into our tithes and our offering. We're going to be giving back to God. In the book of Psalms, chapter 54, verses 6 and 7, it says this. In the King James Version, it says, I will freely sacrifice, everybody sacrifice, say sacrifice, unto thee. I will praise thy name, O Lord, for it is good. Why? For he hath delivered me out of all my trouble, and mine eyes shall see his desire upon mine enemies. In the um, NLT version of it, it says, I will free, in verse 6, it says, I will freely give an offering. Everybody say an offering. When we give our tithes and our offering, Pastor's already done a series on it. We know that that is because we are giving to God, first of all, what he's already given to us. We're giving him that tithe back. And then with our offering, we're saying, God, I trust you with my finances. It doesn't matter what the world looks like. It doesn't matter what the news says. Say, We're saying, God, I trust you enough to give back to you a portion of what you've already given up to me. Why? Because of all the good things that you've already done for me in my life. And so this morning, we're going to be beginning to give in our tithes and our offering. If you're watching us online uh, via stream, you can give to, you can mail it into 404 Sharon Drive, Newport News, Virginia, 23602. We also have our Secure Church app where you can give via the church app. If you're in the building right now, you can, of course, come forward. And we also have our kiosk to my left, your right, in the back, where you can also use that as a way to give your tithes and in your offerings. So there's multiple ways that you can give, but ultimately the ultimate desire is that you give to sow into the kingdom for all that God has done for you. So we can begin to bow our heads. We're going to begin to pray over the offering as the ushers come forward. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for everything that you've already done in our lives. God, when we think about your goodness and your mercy, it makes us want to shout. But God, it also makes us want to give. So we pray that you would bless every single person who gives in their tithes and their offering. Bless them, Lord God. Make them the head and not the tail. God, as we give, we make a declaration that we're not dependent upon this world system, but we are dependent upon heaven. So bless every person that gives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, be faithful to your commitments, um, keeping the dream alive, whether it be your tithes, your offering, of course, and any other things that you've given, including the Burkina Faso Church in Africa. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Welcome to Christian Training. Today we're going to um, dedicate our children to the Lord. And um, we're looking forward to a special time. This is a very special time for our church. Amen. The families of those that are going to be dedicated. And, um, and so we're going to teach on 
come and uh, child dedication today. I pray all those that are getting their babies dedicated uh, here today. Praise God. Let's. Why don't we stand and let get. Let's get going on our Bible study here on on child dedication Sunday. Amen. Exodus chapter 10, verse number 7. Exodus chapter 10 and verse number 7. It says, and I read from the New King James Version, Exodus 10, 7. It says, then Pharaoh's servants said to him, how long shall this man be a snare to us? Stay with me, y'all. Exodus 10, 7. Then Pharaoh's servant said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare to us? Let them go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not, do you not yet know that Egypt is destroyed? So Moses and Aaron were brought again to Pharaoh, and he said to them, Go serve the Lord your God, who are the ones that are going. Hallelujah. And Moses said, we'll, We will go with our young and our old, with our sons and our daughters, with the flocks and our herds, and we will go. For we must hold a feast to the Lord. Then he said unto them, The Lord hath had better be with you when I let you and your little ones go. Beware, for evil is ahead of you. Not so. Go now, who, you who are men, and serve the Lord, for that is what you desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, and all the hail was left. One more sect of scripture, for Samuel chapter 1, verse uh, 24. Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, with three bullocks, one effort of flour and a kin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said unto, and she said, Oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my child, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me a petition which I ask of him. Therefore, I also have lend. That word lend means dedicate in the NIV version. It means dedicate him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. I would like to title my message or my Bible study on this thought, and that is taking our kids to heaven with us. Taking our kids to heaven with us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for this opportunity, Lord, to address our parents and those that are dedicating their babies, uh, their children to the Lord. Lord, I pray today, God, that you would Lord God, allow this Bible study, Lord God, to be sowed in the, in the fertile ground of their hearts, Lord God, so that in time to come, they would remember, Lord, this charge, this admonition, this, Lord, responsibility, Lord God. Lord God, this special moment when they dedicated their children to the Lord. We love you, we praise you, we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Today is a very special day, uh, a day in which we celebrate the blessings of children. 
Amen. The blessings of being a family. And we are dedicating our children to the Lord today. And we cannot overestimate the value of dedicating our children to the Lord. Very valuable. But we know that the Lord God, through godly parents, must be the ultimate influence in the lives of our children. We must quickly acknowledge the powerful influence that you as parents uh, have in the upbringing and the molding of your children. Both father and mother are critical in this upbringing. In society, we have underestimated the v and devalued the influence of the family. But we stand ready to lift and highlight the powerful, God-given role of parenting. And the way that we must uh, take for spiritual success of our children is through the conduit of parenthood because we are a church that longs to be committed to the spiritual well-being of our children. The children that God has given not only to you as your families, but also the children that God has given to us as an assembly. Uh, and we consider them priceless a gift to us. There's a lot of effort behind the scenes that we put to ensure that our children are getting the best possible uh, um, teaching and influence from our ministry here. We strive to assist our parents in making an indelible spiritual impact that will cause each child to desire the love, uh, to desire to love the things of God and also to be used of God. We put that to those two points across in our children's heart and mind to love God and to always be available to be used by God. We have a wonderful connection group team that is second to none, that is totally dedicated to discipling our children in the ways of the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Right now, they are in small groups. Yeah. Right now, they're in our connection groups. Right now, they're being taught not Sunday school. Yeah. Amen. We don't have Sunday school for our kids here. Sunday school is an 1816 uh, process, and we, Sunday school doesn't work in this era. Amen. It's an old concept that has lost its effectiveness. It was started in 1816, and you know what? Uh, it's not, it's, it's not uh, valuable enough. It's uh, when kids think over 1,000 um, uh, thoughts or uh, a, a minute, you know, when they're thinking, they're learning these days to think fast. And we go into a Sunday school class and teach a little story and have them paint uh, with crayons uh, in be between the lines. Uh, let me tell you, their minds are much faster than that. And those teaching, and, 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 and so we, we are trying to keep up with the children's minds. And so we go into small groups for our children. We are talking about subjects that are relevant to them. Where is, is there ever a platform for our children to have a discussion on not to steal, not to lie, or bullying, or whatever? And these are the issues that we're dealing right now. As we, I'm teaching this uh, lesson, we are, we are dealing with those issues right now as we, uh, as we are uh, teaching here. Our, our Connection Group staff... Uh, our teaching and, and having them talk and express um, things about these subjects that are very relevant to our children. And uh, we, let me tell you, just a little Bible story is just not going to cut it in this time and era that we're living in. Amen. And so, and we also have an exciting children's ministry that emphasizing that living for God is the most exciting lifestyle that we can live. We make it exciting for them and we feel that every child that is born is born to be used of God. 
at some level, some way. We understand, and so does the adversary, that the most formative years of a child's life is between the ages of three and seven. And I, as the pastor of this church, as well as our church team, are committed to making a greater impact on our children between the ages of three and seven that the devil ever hoped to. Amen. Amen. And so, let me tell you, the enemy wants our children. Pharaoh desired to keep the children in an opening verse. He said, uh, take everything, but leave your young ones behind. And after being bombarded with cataclysmic plagues, old Pharaoh agreed to give a little bit. He said to Moses and to Aaron, take the men, the women, and leave your little ones here. Because he knew the potential of those children. He knew that he would form them to be whatever he desired them to be. And that same spirit is still around today. Amen. And the enemy longs for our children. That's why the media, that's why commercials, that's why uh, uh, all the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the uh, uh, advertisement agencies and so on and the, and the marketing, they market our children. Um, he has methodically planned to get our children some way or another. In our school system, amen, they're, they're emphasizing new age and humanism and sex education according to the worldly terms and teaching that there is, teaching that no, there's no absolutes and anti-God philosophies and, and the list goes on and on and not only, not only in elementary but also in, in middle school and high school and even in our colleges. Uh, I tell you, the enemy is after our children. Hollywood is after our children. Disney World has built a New Age Park. Magic Kingdom Park is riddled, amen, with uh, uh, anti-God ideas and and themes. Um, Disney movies and magic. You see, magic is is a key feature in Disney movies. Uh, a lot of a lot of you uh, love Disney and uh, subscribe to Disney Plus and all that and think it's cute. Let me tell you, you need to take a, 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 a you need to be aware of what the enemy is doing to our children. Disney and magic are almost synonymous with many of the classics uh, and newer films consisting of spells and curses and powers and other sorcery. It's hard to imagine Disney movies without any magic, especially their little princesses. Uh, I'm going to name some old ones and some new ones. The Little Mermaid, she's a witch. Aladdin, it's it's full of new age philosophies and teaching. Uh, Raya and the Last Dragon, 20 in in this year, it just came out. Full with a lot of uh, satanic stuff. Frozen 1 in 2013, Frozen 2 in 2019. Riddled with a lot of of, of, uh, occultism and a lot of uh, uh, satanic uh, themes. uh, Tangled until 2015. Uh, um, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right or not, but it's Moana or Moan, something, Uh, in in 2016. Amen. All these films are, uh, uh, you see, they're filled. They're satanic symbols even uh, that they don't recognize, but their subconscious picks it up. Symbols that they're seeing in these movies, uh, Disney homosexuality are, are, are is, is is incredible. A few years ago, the scene in Disney XD's Star versus the Forces of Evil episode showed the first two gay guy, the two gay boys kissing. It's not just Frozen. Most Disney movies are pro-gay by teaching and acceptance and questioning gender. The company's film, uh, kids' film, offer a queer study crash course. Then there is the fact that Disney protagonists often reject traditional marriage partners. Ariel wants to marry a human against her father's wishes. 
Bella rejects Gaston's proposal in front of the whole town. Jasmine refuses to marry this sultan's suitors. Pocahontas refuses to marry the tribal warrior. And Mulan rejects conventional matchmaking. In this way, even though Disney films usually offer traditional happy endings with heterosexual marriages, the journey always involves rejecting parental and societal uh, expectations and exercising a freedom to marry who, whoever you want. Spirit that is endemic to gay rights. Uh, Out, a short film released in 2020, focuses on a young man, the main character who was a secret, he is gay, and has a boyfriend named Manuel. The movie Onward, released in 2020, uh, marks Pixar's uh, first confirmed character is a same-sex relationship. A series of uh, high school musicals, the musical, the series uh, premiere on Disney Plus in 2019, have two examples of same-sex relationships. One character mentions having two moms. In 2019, the television series Andy M- Mack, uh, Disney's first character, uttered the words, I am gay. Harry Potter movies full of magic and sorcery. Church, parents, you need to wake up and you need to realize what's happening because all these themes are being infused in the mind, in the heart of our children. Even toys today, paraphernalia, that promote magic and the, and the many forms of occult and unbiblical values. Dark, uh, brats, dolls, they sexualize little girls. LOL dolls, they sexualize little girls as well and have hidden transgender dolls. SpongeBob toys and TV shows, it promotes homosexuality. SpongeBob is often seen holding hands with Patrick, a pink starfish. Subtle messages and tolerances, and whatever you tolerate, you're going to accept in time to come. And you say, oh, it's just cute, isn't it? Yeah, while well, you're saying, oh, it's cute, amen, the enemy is very sly. And he is putting all these themes, amen, and values in our children and their spirits. We need to wake up. Hello, somebody. Five Nights at Freddy's, video games and paraphernalia, murder, scary, uh, Pokemon. Video games and trading cards and Pokemon TV. You know that the, uh, the, the Pokemon in Japan, they're called pocket monsters. Pokemon is based on demonic creatures and their powers. Paganism by focusing on earth and things created. Witch doctors are very, are very familiar with with um, uh, characters and demons. Basically, you capture characters and train them to conquer or capture other characters. Brothers and sisters, parents, we need to wake up. We need to realize what's going on. Today's dolls come with colored hair, obvious makeup, skimpy clothes. Boys' toys consist of dragons, mystical creatures, and zombies. They say... That if a child is born today and get all the current toys and watches all the latest cartoons and all the latest movies and they get all the paraphernalia, that by the age of five years, that child will have absolutely no concept of God. And it's no wonder when you bring your child here Amen. And when, when their mind is riddled and been infused with satanic spirits and, and symbols and, and messages day in and day out, amen, their spirit is going to struggle with the things of God. Not to mention the music. And I teach a whole series on that during a whole in this seminar. But um, music, we need to be careful with our music. The, the internet 
The internet is not strange to our kids. The average age that a little boy is exposed to pornography is 11 years of age. And once a kid gets hooked into pornography, it does something to their minds. It is a seduction. Amen. It is a spirit that the seeds that are planted in their hearts that they're going to wrestle with the rest of their lives. And I'm telling you, I've helped a lot of men and women as well be delivered from uh, 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 pornography. And let me tell you, it is a very, very hard battle to fight and win. Amen. We need to be careful. Video games that kids are exposed to. And you, you think they're playing the video games, but your video game is connected to the internet where there is witches and there is spirits and there is people promoting uh, suicide uh, in, as an option for your children. And while you're washing the dishes and you're all busy with your uh, duties, uh, your child is being influenced by an ungodly person telling them that suicide is the key to a lot of solutions in life. We need to wake up. Netflix is very popular with our children. We need to be careful with Netflix. Amen. It's getting quiet in the house. Amen. Some of you have accepted it, and you need to, you need to go in your home, and you need a clean house. Because your children are being influenced right in their home. And you need to stand up and you need to learn to discern. You need to find what kind of spirits are coming into your house through media. Amen. There is three P's that I have for parents. Number one is proclaim. Everybody say proclaim. 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 No teaching is more explicit and clear in the Bible than that parents should by concept and by principle and example uh, teach their children the way to serve God. Jewish fathers of the Old Testament were expressly commanded to be faithful in this manner. I recommend a book called The Blessing. Amen. Every parent ought to read that. It's called The Blessing. Amen. Uh, how the Jewish fathers uh, expressly commanded uh, their children and, and encouraged them uh, to be faithful to the things of God. Don't let the teaching that a child receives here at the church be the only biblical instruction that they receive. The church is only a supplement. It ought not to be the core, the core uh, of, uh, of the teaching that a, a child receives, a biblical teaching that a child receives. Amen. You need to, to, to spend time with your child telling the things of God. Amen. Um, you have a responsibility to instruct them yourself. Notice what the scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 6 through 9. Some of our Bible quizzes can quote this, uh, but I read from the New King James Version. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently. Everybody say diligently. diligently. Amen. Slap your neighbor and say the Bible says diligently. That means constant. Diligently to your children, how or when, and shall talk of them. You shall talk of these principles diligently when you sit in your house. Amen. Turn the TV off. Turn the video games off. Amen. Get your Bible out. Start teaching your children the things of God when you sit in your house. When you walk, by the way. Oh, in other words, when you're driving, have them sit Amen. The other day, uh, Risa was here, uh, and we were just talking about how that she used to love to get, when she was a little girl, she used to love to get and, and, and ride in the front seat with me. And she would just talk, 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 and I, she kept talking and talking, and, and I would say, okay, now you've talked to me for about 40 minutes, now let me talk to you. And she said, okay, Daddy. And I, would, and I would take that, that time to just infuse principles and concepts of the word of God in her constantly. She reminded me of that not too long ago. Amen. While you're driving with your kids, talk of them uh, when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way or when you drive on the interstate, when you lie down and when you rise up. 
Uh, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. Uh, you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Remind them of the principles constantly. Amen. Bible teaching in the home is desperately needed today to undergird the strengthening, uh, uh, to undergird and strengthen the teaching uh, and the preaching by the pastor from the pulpit. Listen, parent, you are not to be in odds with me. You are to lock arms with me for the salvation of your children. Amen. What an impact it takes it makes on a child and youth to see the faithful the faithfulness of parents joining with the pastor in proclaiming the word of God. This is the reap what you sow principle. If you don't put it in, you won't get it out. God's word forms the standards of our lives as Christians and insists that your family members play by God's rules. Ephesians 6, 6 and 4 tells us uh, to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Amen. Every parent, this is not an option. It is a must. Amen. That we bring our, up our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Every parent has got a responsibility to do that. Admonish means to warn and to caution, to reprove mildly, to advise, to inform, or to remind by way of warning. Admonish them, amen, of the things of God. When a loving parent admonishes in a nurturing way that it has a lasting effect that is very positive. Psychologists state that during our adult lives, uh, uh, our parents' opinions circulate like tape recordings in our minds. Most often, the experts mean that this is the cause of many of our dysfunctions. But why can these parent parental recordings be a constructive thing instead of a negative thing? Amen? So we need to proclaim. Everybody say proclaim. Proclaim. The second P that I want to talk about is protect. Everybody say protect. Protect, protect their innocent, protect their impressionable consciences. You being full of the Holy Ghost, you have the ability to influence your child in ways that is very powerful. Ephesians 6, 12 states that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. This evil power seeks to destroy our children and our homes, protect them by providing a godly spiritual climate. If there is an evil presence in your home, the demons inhabit that atmosphere. If you're playing ungodly music, if you have ungodly shows, if you got murder, if you got cursing, if you got antichrist themes in your home, all you're doing is you are, amen, influencing, uh, uh, and it's influencing your home. Demons are attracted to that. And it's no wonder kids can't sleep at night. Why? Because uh, Satan is reigning in that home because he is being emphasized and proclaimed and and kids are fearful. <clears throat> but if there's a spirit of praise, if there's a spirit of worship in your home, God will dwell there. Amen. If there's a spirit of peace and joy, God will, will dwell there. Our homes must be protected. We must protect our homes. It is the responsibility of parents to see that no defilement gain entrance into your home. Y'all need to draw a bloodline around your house and say, I re in the name of Jesus, I plead the blood over this home. I draw a bloodline over this home and no evil spirit is going to impact my home. Deuteronomy 11.21 likens the, the, the divinely ordained home to heaven on earth. We need to protect our children also from sexual abuse. I, I recommend... I recommend that you don't have kids going over and have sleep over somebody else's house. Well, they're family. You know the most sexual uh, um, uh, uh, abuse happens by family members? Right. 
I tell you what, when I was uh, uh, raising my children, I, I was a bad guy because I wouldn't let my kids go over to somebody else's house. I don't care who it was. You may be good, but I don't know who you're having over while they're there. I absolutely recommend against any sleepovers. And if they're going over to play, I, I want to know who's going to be there. And I wouldn't do it. No, you come to my house. Let me tell you, it only takes about five seconds, a few seconds, for a, somebody to abuse your child and it'll mess up their minds. I tell you, a lot of the counseling that I have to do started with sexual abuse. And most, and, and, and matter of fact, I, I would say today that, that if... If that most of this church, uh, if you would raise your hands and you, you can say that uh, you were sexually abused. Not everybody, but a lot of people were. And some of the things you wrestle with stemmed, some of the personality disorders stem from child abuse. And there are some people that were abused. They've never told anybody. They don't like to talk about it. In generations past, uh, before, that's something you didn't talk about. When fathers would take advantage of their daughters, and the daughters would tell their moms, mom said, oh, no, 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 and they'll brush it under the carpet. Not today, it's coming out. Yeah. And thank God. Or an uncle came by, or a cousin came by. A lot of the marriage problems today stem from child abuse. Let me, let me tell you, there's two things that I really emphasize as a pastor that will save me a lot of trouble. Number one, encourage parents to protect their children from sexual abuse and premarital counseling. I cannot overemphasize. Let me tell you, if you got a problem with uh, child abuse, let me tell you, don't you ever do anything around here because we will report you. I don't care who you are. We protect our children around here. And if you ever see anything abnormal, you let me know. Amen. Why am I so passionate about it? Because I wish, you, I, I, wish I had a film uh, uh, and a video of all the times I've been in my counseling and the tears and the, and the pain and the horror that people express because of child abuse. I've had, I, 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 I've had a front seat to the pain that it causes. And I'm asking every parent, that's why everybody that takes care of children, we, we, we have a, uh, uh, a child uh, safety questionnaire because we protect our children. And if you don't want to fill that out, then you can't work with our children. Period. That's it. We are going to protect our children and you need to protect your children. You need to find out where they're at, what they're doing, who they're talking with, where they're going. The prayers, the, the, uh, the, set, the third P. I better get away from that because I feel very passionate about that. Pay, pray, or I say pray is the third P. Pray. The, the prayer of parents seem to have special power with God in the courts of heaven. We must pray and intercede for their spiritual survival. Prayer will influence your children. Pray for them. Pray constantly. Don't wait till they're teenagers to pray. You need to pray for them while they're in the womb. Pray for them when they're infants, when they're toddlers, when they're children. When they reach adolescence, constantly pray. You cannot, oh, never ever 
ever overestimate the power of prayer for our children. Let me just go to my next point. I need to hurry. Amen. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way that he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. The phrase train up sounds, sounded pretty harsh to me when thinking about a child. You would train a dog and train an animal, not a human being. But I got to looking into the scripture and did a word study on this term and found one of the most beautiful comparisons of God's word. It, it was a term that was used in Bible days by mothers that breastfed their children. And to get the newborn to suck, uh, they would take the dates. They would ask the maiden of the house, the maid of the house, to go crush some dates. And, and she would step on some dates and apply, uh, apply uh, and squeeze the juice out and apply that juice uh, to the mother's breast. And that would entice the newborn to begin to suck. It was also used by horse trainers when taming a wild horse. Uh, they would use a sugar-coated bit that was placed in the mouth, and when the trainer would pull its reins, it would rub the sugar-coated bit in the mouth, and they would enjoy the sweetness, and so it would entice them to obey. So the word train up means to entice entice we need to entice our children to go in the way that they should go spiritually and how God's uh, uh, ordained for them to be and let me just say spiritually they, they need to be in church they need to serve God that's the way that they should go if you don't make church a priority let me tell you you're not training up a child the way that he should go Amen. If you've, if you've missed Sunday school or, or Christian training, if you miss Sunday night service, uh, if you miss worship service, if you miss connection group, you're training your child the wrong. You have to be an example. You have to entice them. You, let's, you are not to talk negative about anybody in the church, neither the parking lot person, the usher, uh, the, the children's ministry worker, uh, the elders, the minister, the pastor. Amen. You ought to think... You ought to think talk positive about man uh, our church people are the best people well, I, you, you got the best pastor you got the best Sunday school teacher you got the best children's worker you got the best so and so you ought to entice them you ought to make that this is the best place to be talk about how good it is to come to church amen I remember when I was raising my kids on Sunday morning, uh, instead of griping, I would jump in the bed and start tickling them and, and happy and say, we're going to church today. We're excited. And I made it enticing for them to come. And so they would get perked up and get ready and get excited. Let me tell you, and they love to be here. Uh, we need to put it in our kids uh, to love to be in the house of God. Today is Sunday. Today we get to go to church. Uh, today we get to worship. You get to be in, in children's church. Amen. Entice them about the things of God. Entice them. A lot of you parents wake up your kids and get up. Come on, get up before I knock your head off, you, off of you. I'm going to hurt you, knock you so bad that Knock you into the, into the future that when you wake up, you, your clothes will be out of style. And, and you're trying to be rough with your kids and trying to, let me tell you, that's not enticing. That's domineering. And that is duty. And duty is the worst motivator. Purposeful purpose is the greatest motivator. We got a purpose. We're going to go serve Jesus because we want to make heaven. Because we're going to live for God. Because living for God is the best life one can live. Quit being mean to your children. Spanking them for every little thing. Count your battles. Be selective in how, when you need a punishment. When, don't spank them for every little thing. If you do, you need to go get checked. You need to go see a therapist. Because you're getting your anger on your children. That's not acceptable. Oh, my Lord. God, help me. We need to make it exciting for our children. 
Amen. To live for God. We don't dress this way. We don't talk this way. We talk like Jesus wants us to talk. Why? Because it brings joy. Because that's the way that we ought to be. Because that's the best life you can live. Because you'll be a successful person. Because when you grow up, you're going to make a lot of money. And you're going to bless the kingdom of God. And talk positive about the things of God. Solomon the wisest men of all pen these words of wisdom to us parents that we need to entice our children in the ways that we should go. We need to make living for God exciting to our children. In the Braille magazine, a magazine for Christian parents, told a story that is so applicable here. While a student at the Los Angeles High School for Performing Arts, charity was offered a plum roll in the NBC's Another World uh, many years ago as a, as a daytime soap opera. She was promised the world, a townhouse in New York City for her and her family, a chauffeur limousine, limo, private tur- tutoring, and a Hollywood salary of 20000 a week. There was a little problem, however. Charity's teenage character was scripted to have an affair with an older married man. After the bedroom romp, she would fall for the lead singer of a rock band and eventually become pregnant. When Charity protested to the producers, they asked, do you need some time to think about it? I says, I don't need any time to think about it. Charity replied, there's no way that I can ever be part of that. That is betraying everything that I believe in. Since Charity's story appeared in Briar, the magazine, thousands of letters have poured in from across the United States around, and around the world. Many come from parents and pastors and youth workers asking uh, my husband and me to how we raise a child who would take such a stand. Listen, we need, our, we need to put that kind of teaching in our children to take a stand against worldliness, against the things of this world. Amen. Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 17. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in? How Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a reproach. The cartoon shows a gate with a sign Please shut the gate. A second glance, however, shows that the gate is closed, but the fence is down. I know something about fences and gates. I can tell you many a story of why it is important to keep the gate closed and also to check your fences. Parents, when was the last time you checked the fences? Fences are important to your lives, they, but they are mandatory to your children. Fences determine boundaries around uh, areas of possession. There is a law that states that if your neighbor has his fence over on your property for seven years or more, he can lay claim to that strip of land. You have an enemy which would like to lay claim to that which you hold dear. Even your children and marriage partner are fair game to him. A solid fence is a landmark as to what is yours. Your children need to know where the boundaries are in their lives. They need to know the rules. They need to know the expectations. They need to know the standards. And that serves as boundaries for them and give them a feeling of security. Fences let children know where the safe areas are. Fences give a a feeling of home. They mark our godly inheritance. Fences are also to keep things in. It's not only natural for young people to lean on the fences and try their boundaries. Cows do it too, and so do children. Cows and children uh, always see the grass on the other side to be greener and bigger. And when children question standards, 
We get nervous and we become afraid that, that we will lose them unless we give them more territory. We forget, however, that when we open the gate, our children are wandering into unsaved territory. If they do it often, they may reject all fences and gates. Let me ask you, how far are you willing to let them go? Standards that you felt right, uh, that you uh, felt were right in the past, are still right today. Fences take constant repair and maintenance. The church and the family should expect more testing of boundaries. But please don't remove the fences. And parents, quit trying to give in to your children, you know, giving them everything they want, hoping that, uh, that, that they're going to be okay and they're going to be happy. No, 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 no. You set the fences, you set the boundaries, whether they like it or whether they don't. Yeah. Fences are to keep things out. There are some scary things that are happening out there. The public schools have opened the doors to all kinds of values that you as a, as a Christian cannot accept for your children. You cannot accept evolution, new age values, anti-God values, abortion, same-sex marriage, barnyard sex, the acceptance of whole, the homosexuality, sexual lifestyle, you cannot accept. Hollywood gets all of his material from breaking the Ten Commandments. And you must protect your children from it. Build a fence to keep it away from our children. Please shut the gate. Parents, let us not remove the ancient landmarks. Our children must have them. The wisest man in the world wrote in Proverbs 22 Verse 28, he said, do not remove the ancient landmarks which your fathers have set. And let me close with this. A biblical, there's a biblical example of dedicating our children to the Lord. Parents are not only... Not only are we to dedicate our children to the Lord, but we should dedicate them on every day of their lives. Begin each morning on your knees. Begin, begin bringing your child before the Lord. Helps you stay focused as they grow older. We don't baptize children because there's not an example in the Bible uh, where any child was baptized. The scripture teaches that baptism is for the believer that has repented. And an infant does not have any conscience or any, any conscious faith and the ability to believe. Nor does the infant have the ability to repent. There's nothing to repent for, repent of. What? God forgive me for dirtying my dirty diaper? All right, there's nothing for them to repent. But there are examples of children being dedicated to the Lord. Hannah dedicating Samuel to the Lord in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 28, uh, verse 24 to 28. It says, now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks, one effort of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord God granted me the petition which I ask of him. Therefore, I also have lent or dedicated him. That word lend means dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be dedicated to the Lord. So they worship the Lord there. She was an example of, uh, uh, by attending the house of the Lord. Parents, you need to be faithful to the house of the Lord. By you being faithful, they're going to be faithful. 
Don't wait till they're 16. Because let me tell you, if you're not faithful now while they're young, when they turn 16, they're going to tell you, well, you didn't go to church. Be an example of attending the house of the Lord. Be an example of worship. Your child ought to see you worship the Lord. They ought to look at you with your hands lifted up and worshiping and praising God with tears in your eyes that you love God and you're moved by his presence. Amen. So many parents just stay there like a, a statue. And then you want your child to worship. And they're not going to worship if you don't worship. The Bible says that she took him to the house of the Lord. She took Samuel. You have to take your children to the house of the Lord. Don't you come to church and leave your children at home. Well, there with my unsaved spouse. Listen, you need to have a greater impact than your unsaved spouse. And you need to bring them to church with you. I don't understand parents that leave their kids at home. And let me just go a little further. Some of you have a husband or wife that are sick in the house. And instead of you bringing your child with you to church, you leave them with a sick parent. Well, I thought they were sick. Why are you leaving them with them? Bring them to the house of God. Amen? Amen? She was also a praying mother. Prayer is powerful. She dedicated him to the Lord. And that's what we're going to do today. And the Bible says that Samuel worshiped the Lord there. And that's our ultimate desire is for our children to worship the Lord. I so much appreciate our children, our young people, worship him at the altar. Amen. Hallelujah. I would to God that some of you parents would get and join them. Amen. At this time, I'm going to have all the parents come with their children. Amen. I'm going to ask, I'm going to call you in order. Amen. And I want you to, Sister uh, Callie is going to help you organize here. First of all, I'm going to call um, the Hall family, and they're going to bring, bring Adriel. All righty. If you would line them up. Amen. Adriel, if you would come. And then I'm going to call the Harper family. Oh, no, the Hansford family. They're going to bring Harper. All right. Line them up in order. All right, and then we're going to call the, uh, the Moss family. They're going to bring Malachi. Hallelujah. If you would just move to, move that, move to the, move uh, and face me in order. Yeah, there you go. The Moss family. We're going to ask the Rao family to come. They're going to bring Kilo. Kylo, all right, excuse me, sometimes these names, and then the Robertsons, if y'all would just move back a little bit, just move back a little bit, the Robertson family, come, come in over here, come in order. So we have the Hall family, the Harper, the Huntsford family, the Moss family, the Ross, the Moss family, the Ralph family, the Robertsons, and then uh, the Smith family is going to bring Ashrael, and then we're going to bring uh, Carter Valentine. Man, come. Family. Okay. 
Okay. All righty. Wonderful. All righty. I am going to, I'm going to have a, do a covenant with you in accordance with the purpose for which God have, uh, you have come. Please respond to the following covenant with we do. All right. Do you now present your child before God in solemn dedication? Do you consecrate yourselves as parents to bring up your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord Jesus? Do you promise to instruct him or her in the teachings of, of Jesus Christ and in the practice of prayer and, in, and to guide him or her in the development of Christ-like character? Do you promise to try to the best of your ability to shape the home life of your child both by family devotions and by your words and your example that he or she will at the proper age most naturally come to, a, uh, to serving the Lord and into fellowship and service of the church. Amen. Then repeat after me, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the the Lord Jesus Christ I dedicate my child or my children to God his service, and his love and kindness. At this time, I'd like to ask the leadership, Brother McSherry, if you would uh, come. Uh, it's just a Grace Long first, and then Brother Enquist, Sister Peters, Brother Caleb Elliott, Brother Jordan Easter, man, Brother Ben Farmer, Brother John with Avril Hall, Sister Missy with Sister with uh, Harper, Ben Farmer with Malachi, Jordan Easter with Kylo, Caleb Elliott with Amir, Diana Peters with Amari, and Ted Enquist with Asheril Smith, and Grace Long with Carter Valentine. All right, if you would take the baby in your hand, and I'm going to pray a prayer of dedication. All righty. Can you, can you help us pray? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these treasured children. Although you have entrusted these children to these parents as a gift, I know they belong to you. And like Hannah offered Samuel, they dedicated these children to you, Lord. We recognize that they are always in your care. Help these parents, Lord, with their weakness and imperfections. Give them strength and godly wisdom to raise their children after your holy word. Please provide, supply supernaturally what they lack. Keep these children walking on the path that leads them to eternal life. Help them overcome the temptation of this world and the sin that would so easily entangle them. Dear God, send your spirit daily to lead, to guide, and counsel them. Always, Lord God, assist them to grow in wisdom and stature and grace, in knowledge and kindness and compassion and love. Many, may these children serve you faithfully with their whole heart devoted to you all the days of their lives. And may they discover the joy of your presence through daily relationship with you, Jesus. Help them never to hold on too tight to their children nor neglect their responsibilities before you as a parent. And Lord, let their commitment to raise their children for the glory of of your name cause their lives to forever testify of your faithfulness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we dedicate these children to you and to your holy service. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we decree it in Jesus' name. They are now yours. They've been dedicated to you for your service in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going, to, I'm going to just quickly bless every child 
Amen. And we've got a wonderful gift. We got a certificate. We got a a rose, and we also got a Bible. Amen. I want to be able to give them their first Bible. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Isn't that precious? Lord, in the name of Jesus, we dedicate him to you for your service. He is now yours. In the name of Jesus, God, we bless him in Jesus' name. This is your cutie. Lord Jesus, we now dedicate her to you. She is now yours in the name of Jesus. We dedicate it to your service. From this day forth, she now belongs to you in Jesus' name. Praise God. That's a good looking boy right here. Looks like a little preacher. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we dedicate him to you, Lord God. He is now yours. We dedicate him for your service. From this day forward, he's going to live for you the rest of your life, rest of his life. In Jesus' name, he is now yours. In Jesus' name, praise God. Kylo, he's a newest member, isn't that precious? I believe he's a newest member, maybe not yet. Look like a little preacher too. <laughs> Lord God, he belongs to you. We dedicate him to you in the name of Jesus. He is now yours. We dedicate him for your service. Lord, from this day forward, Lord, may he live for you the rest of his days. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, sweetie. It's okay. It's okay. Here you go. Here you go. There you go. It's okay. Lord Jesus, she belongs to you, Lord. We dedicate her to you for your service, Lord. From this day forward, Lord, she belongs to you. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Okay. Amen. That, that, all that means is she's going to be a worshiper. Like a little preacher too. Look at that. All righty, Lord Jesus, we did.